Stop Financing Terrorism. Join Terror Free Energy Coalition. Visit www.terrorfreeoil.org. Yesterday, the New York Times Magazine ran a story about all the various names this war has been called for an entire page. The article talked about all of the brain power in Washington, D.C. that's been used to come up with and shoot down the names like the Iraq War. Nah, that doesn't really work. They're sort of an ally now. Plus, we can't forget about Afghanistan, remember? Then there was the war on terror. That one stuck for a while, but then people realized that terror isn't the enemy. It's just a tactic. The war on Saddam. Kind of dumb, because Saddam was captured, that was useless. Then at some point, we moved on to trying to define it as an ideology instead. The war on Islam. Who do you think was upset about that? Yeah, Muslims didn't appreciate that one too much. How about the war on Islamic radicals? No, not catchy enough. And this time, Democratic senators nixed it for being insensitive. How about the war on Islamic radicalism? Sort of the same thing. Do I hear war on Islamofascism? Not bad, but really all you've done is changed Islamic to Islamo. It's not really creative. You get the point. The real story here is, I don't care what you call the damn thing, just win it. Are we really full of that much free time in Washington, D.C., that the brain trust has uh, nothing better to do than sit around and debate this stuff? How is it that any time we actually face a real major obstacle, we spend more time trying to be politically correct than we spend on trying to solve it. Take illegal immigration, for example. How many different names can you, can you uh, uh, list off right na now for the, all of the things that we've called illegal aliens? There is illegal aliens. There's undocumented workers, deportable immigrants, prohibited citizens. I mean, come on, are we serious? Solve the problem, Washington. You want a name for the war that doesn't alienate anybody, doesn't leave anybody out? Great. Try World War III on for size with your focus groups and your speech writers. Or better yet, don't. Just go win it. Next, President Bush met today with Turkey's Prime Minister to talk about the continuing alliance between the two countries in the war of whatever you want to call it. But the real story is that the meeting was probably a lot more heated and divisive than either side will let on publicly. To understand what I mean, I need you to go back to July 4th, 2003, a date which, but I mean, if you're like me, I just remember it from stuffing my face with hot dogs and lighting up sparklers. But if you were in Turkey and a Turkish citizen, oh, you remember it for a very different reason. It was on that day, back in 2003, in a small town in northern Iraq, that the U.S. military arrested 11 foreign troops based on, quote, reports of disturbing activity. Well, they put hoods over the troops' heads, threw them in the back of a truck, and brought them back for interrogation. It quickly became apparent that they were legitimate Turkish soldiers. After about 60 hours in custody and multiple phone calls to the White House, they were all released. Well, war zone. No harm, no foul, right? No, no, not for Turkey. This event, which has become known as the Hood event, was barely reported here in America. But it was a national embarrassment for Turkey. A huge thing. And that's not really a trivial thing when it's an embarrassment. Remember, almost every war fought in the Middle East has been to, you know, to avenge some past humiliation. A couple of years later, now this is 2005, a movie came out. It was called Valley of the Wolves, Iraq. It was released in Turkey. It used the Hood event as a starting point to build up the based on a true story element. But then it morphed into just spooky propaganda with scenes of our troops massacring civilians at a wedding and then American doctors coming in and taking the organs out of children and sending them to Jews in Tel Aviv. It's frightening stuff. Meanwhile, the anti-Semitism also seems to be growing in Turkey. Last year, Hitler's book Mein Kampf sold over a hundred thousand copies and in March of 2005 this poster was distributed. Look at this. This went through all throughout Istanbul. The headline is, America, get your hands off the Middle East. Now, what you just see on your screen here 
is another poster side by side. Uh, this, the other one is Nazi propaganda that portrayed Israel as trying to take over the world in the 1930s. Look at the similarities here. Stunning, isn't it? But all the negative sentiment aside, I think the biggest threat Turkey poses is their ongoing clash with the PKK Kurds in northern Iraq. The Turkish foreign minister said this last weekend, quote, if our friends won't help us, then we'll do the job ourselves, end quote, implying, I believe, that they will cross the Iraqi border to fight if they have to. To me, that would be the proverbial shot heard around the world. That would trigger an avalanche of events beginning with Iran crossing the border as well, something that would put our troops in extremely dangerous situations. But how likely is any of that to happen? Walid Shubat, he is a former PLO terrorist and author of Why I Left Jihad. Walid, you say that Turkey is actually a bigger enemy to us than Iran. Why? After the fall of communism, uh, there was a vacuum in the Middle East and specifically also in the southern parts of Russia. After the fall of communism, the CIS nation, uh, the Commonwealth of Independent States, specifically uh, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, those countries uh, have a vacuum of power. Uh, Iran now is flexing its muscle to become the superpower. Of course, uh, uh, Turkey is not going to sit idle watching this happen. Uh, but Turkey has to uh, kind of downgrade their secularism in order to win the Muslim world and to polarize the Middle East to see Turkey as the superpower. This is why you see uh, Saudi Arabia now coming to visit Turkey and doing some sort, some sort of business together and things like that. So Turkey wants to flex its muscle right now and the only way to do it is by being the dominant force to represent Islam to the Muslim world. Turkey is kind of, correct me if I'm wrong, but as I see Turkey, it's kind of like Pakistan, where there's the good Turkey and the bad Turkey. Yes. Am, am, I, am I wrong on that, or is that accurate? You're right. The generals in Turkey, the military machine, still by far is secularist. However, the elections of a Muslim fundamentalist governing party uh, changes the status quo. Uh, and that's what you see happening. In fact, Erdogan, who's the chief in charge there, had made his famous speech, his Mein Kampf, if you will, in which he stated, the mosques are our refuge, the domes are our helmets, the minarets are our bayonets, which landed him in jail. In fact, his wife is uh, wearing a hijab and trying to say that we're going back to Sharia Islam. He cannot, they, they cannot win and polarize the Middle East unless to go back to Islamic fundamentalism. Sunni and Shia are both fighting over this issue. And America is uh, kind of living in a dream world where they think that uh, secularism still by far is, uh, is dominating Turkey when that's not true. Okay, uh, Waleed, you are a former terrorist. I mean, you were a guy who went out and, you know, did what terrorists do. Um, you left it. Your solution here, if I'm not mistaken on Turkey, is to disengage from these guys and don't treat them as friends or allies, which is exact, the exact opposite suggestion that everybody else has. They all say, oh, we got to stay engaged. Let's go rush to Iran. Wouldn't this make things worse if we would follow your advice? Well, America needs to understand when we were, when I was fundamentalist, when I was fighting in the uh, in jihad movement, if you will, the thought is that the fall of the caliphate uh, was in Turkey, the Ottoman Empire. This is why you see, just last month, there was demonstrations throughout the streets of Gaza calling for Turkey to reestablish the caliphate from Turkey, from, from the Ottoman Empire. So in, in essence, we wanted to revive the Ottoman Empire centered in Turkey. So we have, we have to support governments, I mean, uh, countries like Cyprus. Cyprus was being occupied by Turkey. Turkey, uh, even with the aid of the United Nations, the United Nations is trying to suppress the, uh, the Cypriots and trying to make the foothold of the Turkish government even uh, forever uh, in, in Cyprus, which, in which they burned so many churches, they've persecuted for many, many years. Turkey alone, historically, let's not forget, Turkey alone was responsible for the death of 10 million people throughout its history. Okay, Waleed, uh, we, we have to have you back on. I'd love to have you on the radio show because I've read your book recently and I'm currently re-researching some of the claims that you've made um, because you talk about this in biblical uh, 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 fashion at the, towards the end of your book and it's hair raising stuff so we'll talk to you again stop financing terrorism join terror free energy coalition
visit www.terrafreeoil.org.